Hey, David Brewster here in episode of 3 for All. This is 3 Ted Nugent Licks from 1976. And before I say or do anything else in this episode, I need to clear the air. This is Late Night Lessons, so this channel is completely devoted to the guitar and music and music education. You know, uh, finding inspiration, being creative, exposing viewers to new players or new ideas. So this channel has nothing to do with politics or religion or guns or any of that stuff. So we're going to take that stuff and throw it out the window. And we're mainly just going to focus on Ted Nugent in the 70s, obviously, 1976. But, uh, you know, Ted's been on the scene since 1964. Had seven albums with the Amboy Dukes. He's released 17 uh, solo albums. Also two albums with Damn Yankees with Jack Blades and Tommy Shaw. Now, back in the 70s, Ted had a secret weapon in the band, Derek St. Holmes. And Derek is the voice of a lot of Ted Nugent's music. He also played, you know, rhythm and lead guitar. And they would trade licks or play harmony solos, you know, in concert. So Derek definitely is an underappreciated, kind of obscure, you know, legend connected with Ted Nugent. And they did kind of rekindle, you know, their friendship and working relationship later. But then Derek also worked with Brad Whitford. You know, after Ted Nugent, Brad temporarily left Aerosmith and they joined forces, you know, Derek St. Holmes and Brad Whitford. But, you know, Derek's a really interesting musician, so check him out. Starting in 1975 with the first Ted Nugent album, there's a six-year window where Ted released an unheard of eight albums, you know, from 1975 to 1981. He was just on fire, like I said earlier. So, I mean, two of those albums were technically live albums, but if you're curious and you're not really that familiar with Ted, you know, especially in the 70s, there's certain albums that have a very specific font. Not free-for-all up there. Free-for-all is a little different. But if you see the Ted Nugent logo, you know, back and he used back in the day during that six year window, um, those are the best albums, in my opinion. Like, you know, that certain font that he used and then also, of course, free for all, too. But uh, there's just something really special about those 70s albums from Ted Nugent. But back in the 70s, you know, seeing Ted live was where it was at. I mean, that was the appeal or the draw. People would go to his concerts and just freak out because he was just a running ball of energy on stage. Imagine Angus Young with big, you know, caveman hair running around, you know, like in a loincloth playing a Gibson Birdland. And that's Ted Nugent in the 70s. You know, and here's a clip of him up on top of his amps and he actually falls. But check this clip out. <laughs> I mentioned the Gibson Birdland a second ago, but back in Ted's, you know, heyday in the 70s, you know, using that big, you know, semi hollow body Gibson guitar, you know, Fender amps lined up behind him, you know, just basically all the way up, you know, just pegged. And he had this really interesting feedback and sustain and this, you know, just energy when he would play. And it was the combination of the loud, you know, amplifiers with that hollow guitar. And he would just get this, you know, really interesting feedback. So here's a clip with three different moments during this concert where he's just getting this really unusual and, and unique sound with that guitar. Okay, first up, we've got this oblique bending idea that comes from Stranglehold, and this is a very famous and signature lick from that song, but I've always liked that it. it has this kind of sad, almost crying kind of flavor or sound to it, like this. <laughs> natural minor and we're doing this oblique bend here where we're bending the 15th fret on the B up and then you're going to catch the 15th fret on the high E with your pinky but you want to separate those notes you don't want to play it together like this no. you don't want it to ring together like that you're going to separate it so after you bend that note up you want to mute the B when you grab that G on the 15th fret there on the high E like that so bend up mute grab that G and then you want to pick that bent note and release it and when you release that bend, you're going to end on that C right there on the 13th fret. And 
do that lick again and you're gonna end on B right there on the 12th fret. Then double pick that C note again. And then you're gonna come down A natural minor like this. Um, one more time there. kind of you know busy like sometimes he's double picking sometimes he's pulling off in there but it has a cool uh, you know flow to it so it's a very famous lick but one more time here Next up, we have a variation of an old Paul Kossoff lick. You know, Paul Kossoff's the late great, you know, guitarist that played with the band Free. But, um, you know, we're basically an E major pentatonic, like this. One more time. So we're in uh, E major pentatonic, technically. And we're going to basically bend this B up to C sharp, and uh, you're going to release the bend and then bend it back up like this. Then you're going to pull off that B to that G sharp right there. And then when you do that, you're going to basically do the pull off, uh, grab that F sharp right there, go back to the G sharp. And then you're going to bend this uh, F sharp up to G sharp. And that's when you're going to reach over here with your pinky while you're still holding that bend. Grab the E right there with your pinky, and then you're gonna release that bend, and then do this uh, E F sharp to E. So really slow, we're doing. the song all right now you can hear uh, the original what I'm considering the original version of that lick this is kind of a variation of uh, some licks that Paul Kossoff you know used to play and I'm guessing that's where Ted got this I'm totally guessing there but it does sound like Paul Kossoff big time <laughs> okay, up next is a melodic uh, slip and slide lick that takes place in stranglehold once again and once again, this is a very familiar and famous, you know, lick, but I always like this kind of slippery sound uh, that he captured, you know, in the solo like this. One more time. So we're basically still in A minor, A natural minor, and he does play uh, F natural right here. Like he's starting on this G to C. You're going to slide that uh, C to B and then pick up F natural right there on the high E like this. And slide that B to A and pick up that E note right there on the high E. You're going to slide that A down to G and then pick up that D note right there on the high E. So you're kind of, you know, slowly inching your way, you know, down the fretboard. But when you get right there... Right there, he's going to slide this G to F sharp, so I don't know why he twisted from F natural to F sharp. Maybe he just liked the way it sounded. But there you're actually kind of implying Dorian, technically, with that, uh, that raised sixth. Well, you got this. So right there, you're going to slide down to that F sharp, uh, pick up that C note, slide that F sharp down to uh, E, grab B, and uh, like this. Then you're going to slide this E down to D, and then with your third finger, uh, return to this E note, and you're going to start sliding around like this. And then just end with a double stop there on the fifth fret on the B and the high E. Like this. And I find it interesting, you can hear a lot of modern guitarists playing variations of that kind of idea. Now, I don't know if they actually got it from Ted Nugent. But it does remind me of, uh, you know, some things you can hear like John Petrucci and some other players play. And John's done a bunch of stuff like that. You know, where he's kind of expanded uh, those fingerings and shapes, you know, moving around the fretboard. And I'm not saying that John got this from Ted Nugent, but it just reminds me of that kind of idea. One more time with the stranglehold lick.
Okay, here's a bonus lick from this footage, and it's this melodic picked bending phrase that's kind of unusual, something like this. <laughs> So we're still in uh, E major pentatonic like we were earlier, and it starts with this little phrase, and then you're going to start doing this uh, whole step bend from F sharp to G sharp, and you're going to pick it like this. So start with this, a little pull off, you know, F sharp to E, that C sharp back to E. And then you've got that whole step bend, the extra picks, release it, and then go to that E note. Same thing on the B string, kind of mimic that, but grab B, bend that up a whole step, pick it, and then release that to that G sharp right there. And then grab this E on the high E string and bend that up a whole step and back with vibrato. Then grab this E, F sharp E, and then do the same thing again. So the first half right there. Then you want to come down uh, E major pentatonic like this. Right, right there. Then you're going to shift slide this F sharp to G sharp right here. And you're going to slide into that G sharp, grab B and E. And then you're going to grab this D note, bend it up a whole step, pick it again after you've released it, and then bend it up again a whole step. Like that. So one more time, really slow. That's going to wrap this episode of 3 for All with three Ted Nugent licks from 1976. And like I mentioned at the beginning, you know, this channel is all about guitar and music. You know, I'm not going to spin off on some weird rant, you know, that's not related to the guitar with music. So I was a little worried about putting this together, but then I've seen requests just pouring in, you know, ever since I started this channel. And everybody asked for 70s Ted Nugent. And no offense to Damn Yankees or more recent things that he's done, but it seems like that's what everybody loves about Ted Nugent, is Ted Nugent in the 70s, not necessarily now or, or 10 years ago or whatever. And I've seen him twice, and both times, you know, he opened for Kiss, and I thought it was really interesting, you know, the first time it was Kiss without makeup, you know, and Bruce Kulick was pl uh, playing guitar with him. And then like 10 years later, I saw him again, and it was the farewell tour with makeup, Ace Frehley and Peter Criss. And, you know, Ted Nugent was the opener. You know, both times I've seen Kiss were the same two times that I saw Ted Nugent. And the second time, Tommy Aldrich was on drums. I think Marco Mendoza was on bass. And they were a trio. And they rocked, you know, when they opened for Kiss the second time. And they rocked the first time, too. But I was really paying attention, you know, in 2000 when I saw him. And that's the last time I saw Ted live. But that was a great concert. And there's just something about him, you know. I mean, even though I don't really agree with what comes out of his mouth, I do agree with what comes out of his guitar. You know, I like his, his riffs and his ideas and his songs. So anyway, leave some feedback and comments. Please subscribe to Lessons, and I'll be back before you know with more content material. Thank you.